Testing one, two. Refreshing it. I don't know. I'm sure. Let's see if I can do something here. The, the sound is.
by authority of the court on high and by the authority of this court below, with divine consent, with the consent of this congregation, we hereby declare that it's permitted to pray with those who have transgressed. <clears throat> I wanted to clarify the usage of this particular prayer. It sets the tone for the evening, which is that of our being on trial. Everything we have done over the past year is being judged. We committed some good deeds. We committed some not so good deeds. And a great deal of what we human beings do, even inadvertently, is either not quite so good or not quite so bad. What is significant is that in 1492, the same day on which Columbus set sail, all the Jews of Spain and a year later the Jews of Portugal were expelled. They had lived there in peace and harmony for a full hundred years. It was the golden century. Poets, legislators, court officers, rabbis, writers of Jewish law, all flourished in Spain under Muslim rule. Later on, because of the influence of Tomas de Torquemada, the Grand Inquisitor, who supposedly, because his skin was kind of dark, his enemies called him El Yudio, the Jew. He developed an arch hatred for the Jewish people. And the legend is that when Columbus was, I'm sorry, not Columbus, when Abravanel, when Abravanel, the rabbi and court officer, who was very influential with King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella, when he was about to convince them to allow the Jews to stay, Torquemada came into the throne room waving a crucifix and said, our savior was betrayed for 30 pieces of silver, and now you're doing the same thing. At this time, I'll do the Kol Nidre.
בשיבה של מעלה ובשיבה של מטה, הלדת המקום ילדת הקהל, אנו מטילים להתפלל עם Oh. 
Prayer books aside as I deliver my message. First off, on behalf of myself and my family, I wanted to offer all of you, as well as my colleague, uh, Cantor Javier Smolars, and our accompanist, Mr. Mar Marcelo Barsky. I wanted to offer you sincere and uh, heartfelt good wishes for the coming year. And the most important thing, of course, is uh, chozek, that is uh, strength. That is the important thing these days. Well, despite the solemnity of the season, I want to begin my sermon with a, a parable, a little short story, uh, sort of a joke, but I don't know if it's funny enough to qualify. Three tallest strings go into a bar but they have a problem. Over the bar is a big sign that says, we don't serve strings. And the first string says, uh, no problem, I can get a drink. He goes up to the bar and asks for a glass of Manischewitz, straight up. The bartender says, are you a string? And the string says, yes, yes, I am a string. And the bartender points to the sign that says, we don't serve strings. Now the second string takes his turn. He goes up to the bar and asks for a glass of schnapps. And the bartender says to him, are you a string? And the string says, yes, yes I am. And the bartender says, I cannot serve you. All of this is creating a dilemma for the third string and uh, the other two strings are sitting there looking very unhappy indeed. And he says, the third string says, look, I can get a drink, just watch. And he twists and he turns, and he contorts himself into all sorts of contortions, and now he's all twisted and turned, and he's getting a little worn out in the edges from all the exertion, but he goes up to the bar, and he asks for a glass of Israeli Maccabee beer, and the bartender says to him, are you a string? And the string responds, no, I'm afraid not. Get it? Afraid not? Okay. 
Now you could ask, what does this story possibly have to do with the new year? And I would respond that most of us are like the third string. We are tied into knots, knots that keep us from totally enjoying life. We are held back very often from human relationships with relatives and friends. We clench our teeth. We feel our neck and stomach muscles tighten. We fold our arms across our chests. We feel the knots. What is the solution to this dilemma? We can find it in three well-known Jewish symbols. The talus, I'm wearing one. The glass, which is broken at the end of the chasana, the chatuna, the wedding ceremony. And the luchot, the first set of tablets, which Moses broke in his anger, following his descent from Mount Sinai and seeing the golden calf. Why the talus? We wrap ourselves in it. It's a whole piece of cloth, but if you look at the tzitzit, if you look at the fringes, you'll see that they're all twisted and knotted. We look upon these fringes during the service. Some of us play with the fringes during the service. It's a nervous habit. And we think about those things that we carry on the fringes of our lives that tie us in knots. What about the shattered glass? at the end of the marriage, at the end of the wedding ceremony. The wedding ceremony is full of images of wholeness. The rabbi recites prayers, taking two individuals and uniting them into one family. And symbolically and spiritually, all of Israel shares in their joy. But at the end of this wonderful ceremony with blessings and readings and exchanging of vows, we take a glass and we shatter it. There are many reasons given for this custom. The most popular one, of course, is that even on the day of our greatest joy, we do not forget that Mashiach has not yet come, the temple lies in ruins, and our joy will be complete only when Messiah comes. But on a personal level, the sound of breaking glass can also remind us that even in the arms of a loved one, we may also know moments of loneliness, of hurt, and of anger. And then there's the ascent to the summit of Mount Sinai. Together with Moses, our rabbi, whether we're reading the story in the Chumash or reading the Torah portion, that includes it, we climb the rocky path to visit with God, there to receive his greatest gift, the Torah. Face a glow with divine radiance, Moses descends to teach Torah to his people for the first time, to prove to them that they are truly Am Segula, the treasured nation. But he sees that they were worshiping a golden calf. He is shocked and saddened over Israel's ingratitude. He takes the two tablets and smashes them to the ground. Later, after the Israelites repent for their sin, Moses again ascends Mount Sinai, there to receive a second set of tablets. I wear around my neck a golden pair of luchot. It was a gift on my bar mitzvah. I've had it for years and years. But whatever happened to the first set of broken tablets? Tradition tells us that the broken tablets were placed in the Ark of the Covenant, the Aron Ha'edut, the Ark of Testimony. It was a hollow box coated with gold inside and out, carried by the Levites at the head of the Israelite processional through the desert, along with the replacement set. So in this hollow box, you had two sets of tablets, the broken set, which Moses destroyed, and the second replacement set, which Moses carved with his own fingers. I would suggest that both sets of tablets represent how we feel as we are symbolically or virtually in temple today. We appear whole and complete on the outside, but each one of us within carries the broken pieces of our lives. These then are the hidden parts of our personalities embodied in these Jewish symbols, knotted fringes, shattered glass, 
broken tablets. And we are reluctant often to confront or consider these aspects of our lives. We would rather hold on to the entire cloth of the talit. We would rather gaze upon the pristine whiteness of the chuppah, the marriage canopy. We would want to admire from below the sturdy tablets which form part of the doors of our Aron Kodesh, our holy ark, in this case in the chapel. And from time to time, when I am alone in the building, I am so privileged, and one day all of us will be, to go up to the ark in the chapel and touch the yud and kiss my hand. Can't do it now, except symbolically. Is it better to gloss over our personal brokenness? No. In order to achieve wholeness, to be accepted by God during this holiday, we need to recognize where we have become broken, how it happened, and the ways to fix it. There's a quotation attributed to Ernest Hemingway, my all-time favorite modernist writer. He probably never said or wrote it. It's really not terribly Hemingway, but it's a good quote. And I quote, life breaks everyone. And if it doesn't kill them, they become stronger in the broken places, unquote. It happens. It's a dangerous proposition living. And who has broken us? People, relatives, friends, colleagues, people we thought liked us and stabbed us in the back, people who did the wrong thing with the best of intentions, and people who just hurt us when we were growing up. We thought we loved them, we, uh, and these people have often done it, as I say, often with the best intentions. So often, when I speak to congregants in private in my study, they have the same tale of woe, a brother, a sister, an uncle, a grandparent. Somebody did them wrong. Somebody did them dirty. And that person is gone. In many instances, that person has passed on to their eternal reward. And this person speaking with me is left to carry the issue. Immediately following the High Holy Days and Simchat Torah, we begin the cycle of stories in Genesis, Breshit. And I love Breshit. But I will not stand in front of you, even virtually, and lie and tell you that everything in Breshit works out just fine. From the very beginning, not Adam and Eve, they're fairly innocuous, but rather Cain the Hevel, Cain and Abel, laying aside that well-known explanation that Cain is a farmer, Abel is a shepherd, God likes shepherds. Throughout the Chumash and most of the Tanakh, God prefers shepherds for whatever his reason. <clears throat> but in this instance, Cain presents fruit and vegetables, nothing wrong with that, and they weren't spoiled either. Abel, on the other hand, presents the, first, the firstlings of his flock. And God says to Abel, you done good. And to Cain, not so much. Now Cain, in his anger, does not report back to God. He kills his brother Abel. It is the first fratricide. It is the first murder. And we're all aware of the brother's keeper moral. But there's a more universal lesson here. Obviously, when life bruises us, when someone we know and love does the wrong thing and hurts us, we're not going to murder them. But are we going to scapegoat them? That is a possibility as well. Many of us are aware that Abraham broke his father's idols. It's a midrash. It may or may not have happened. We'll never know. But how many of us know there's another midrash, another legend that says that Terach, the father of Avram turned him over to King Nimrod, who thrust him into a fiery furnace. Of course, the Midrash goes on to say, because of his great emunah, his great faith, Abraham went through the fire and emerged whole and unscathed. But why the father? How many of us know of a parent-child relationship that went badly? I know of one family, not in this congregation, where the son, because of a learning disability, did not or could not measure up to the father's expectations. The father made the boy's life so miserable that the boy left the house, left the family at an early age. 
he fell in with a group of drug addicts and died of an overdose. If the child doesn't live up to the parent's hopes, is the parent justified in thrusting the child aside? I don't think so. It's even on television. There's a program on HBO called Big Little Lies, and there's a character played by Reese Witherspoon. And she says, and this is a quote, I love my grudges. I tend to them like little pets. This is a very perverted outlook. There has got to be some perverse attachment between people and their grudges to hold them for so long. But now it's Yom Kippur. Many of us will go for 24 hours without food or drink. Imagine if we made a promise to go 24 hours without saying one unkind word, without criticizing other people. Many of us find it hard to get through the day or at least the morning without our cup of coffee. Are we as addicted to finding fault, to negativity as to caffeine? This Yom Kippur, we must pledge to move forward. And there's a saying, don't move back. You're not going that way. I would challenge all of you within the sound of my voice during this holiday season and after, and I do not exclude myself, try to avoid any unkind words. But what about those who find it difficult to move on, who may be going through a difficult period and who need help and companionship? That is why we have Temple. I am so glad, at least I feel this way, and I'm sure many other people share this feeling. Temple Shalom marches on. Yes, we are virtual. Yes, we care about your hope, uh, your health. It, it bothers me greatly. I cannot be with you, shall we say, in the flesh this holiday. But gamzu yavor, this too shall pass. On my way here this evening, I had the greatest pleasure. I called a number of congregants, wished them well, and they did the same to me. We still have that humanity with the technology. The fact is this. Imagine if, God forbid, this crisis had developed two years ago. We wouldn't have Zoom. We wouldn't have FaceTime. We wouldn't have all these technological wonders that make it possible for us to stay in touch. So in closing, our talesim are woven from the cloth of community. And you, if you are not part of it, can be part of our community. The shattered tablets, we carried them in the ark. There is life even after tragedy. Tzitzit. When life twists and turns us into knots, we can gain strength from others who have struggled as we do and yet succeeded in overcoming the pain of life. In conclusion, Shma Kolener, O oh Lord, hear our voice and answer our prayers on this holy day of Yom Kippur and every day following. We'll say Amen. Thank you very much. Page 360, we formally start our Ma'ariv service with the Barhu, the invitation to pray. Please rise. Barhu. Un 
Baruja ta Adonai, Barujo Barushemo, ya ila ra ila 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 ila, ya ila ra ila ila ra 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 ra, Amari Hara. Second paragraph, Abat Olam. Abat Olam, Beit Israel, Amcha, Rafta, Torah, Mitzvot, Kukim, Mishpatim, Otan, Chazan, page 362, for the Shema, we cover the eyes. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Baruch Shem Kivod, Malchuto, Leolam paragraph, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. These words which I command you this day shall you take to heart. You shall diligently teach them to your children. You shall repeat them at home and away, morning and night. You shall bind them as a sign upon your hand. They shall be a reminder above your eyes. You shall inscribe them upon the doorpost of your homes and upon your gates. We'll continue reading silently to the end of the tzitzit paragraph, the second paragraph on 364. Adonai Eloechem Hem We continue silently. The second, the last part or the third part would be the third paragraph on page 364. 366. <laughs> Moshe Ubene Israel Lechanu Shirira Mesirim Chara Malchut Kha 
Mecha Bokei Abri Bnei Moshe Seni Anube Amron I'm going to read this paragraph in the English. We can read it together. I want us to keep in mind all the cholim, all the folks who are not well in our congregation, God forbid, in the world. Help us, our Father, to lie down in peace. Awaken us to life again, our King. Spread out over us your shelter of peace. Guide us with your good counsel. Save us for the sake of your mercy. Shield us from enemies and pestilence, from starvation, sword, and sorrow. Remove the evil forces that surround us, shelter us in the shadow of your wings. You, O oh God, guard us and deliver us. You are gracious and merciful King, guard our coming and our going. Grant us life and peace, now and always. Spread over us the shelter of your peace. Praise to you, Lord, and spread the shelter of peace over us, all the people of Israel, over Jerusalem, and the entire world. page 368 if you are sitting you rise for on these days atonement shall be made for you to cleanse you of all your sins before the Lord shall you be cleaned <laughs> Ah, <laughs> 
standing silent prayer 370 to 382 after which you may be seated
386, we open the ark as we recite the Ya'ale. Ya'ale tachanunei nume elef. May our supplications rise at dusk. Ya'ale tachanunei prayers or confession rise at dusk. Our anguish at our imperfection meet the dawn, and let reconciliation make us whole at dusk. <laughs>
on page 388. There is a beautiful melody, a beautiful nigun for Aneshamalach. The soul is yours, the body is your creation. Lord, have compassion upon your handwork. Try it at home. Lai lai la, lai lai la, lai lai la, lai lai la. Together, Anishamalach, Anishamalach, the Aguf Baulach, Hosa, Hosa, Allah, Allah, Anishamalach. We have the uh, 13 attributes of God's mercy, and you'll find that on page 392. Uh, please rise. And open. Adonai, Adonai, el rachum bechanu, erech ha'im, berachesed mehebe. No ser que se deslaga la fin, no se abone en bafecha, vejata, vejata, que Adonai, Adonai, el rajo vejano, eres un país, para que se deslaga no ser que se deslaga la fin. No se abone ma fecha vejata vena que Adonai, Adonai, el rajo vejano Erej haim, verab gesed vegemet No ser gesed la galafim No se abone ma fecha vejata vena Salah, Talabonino, le Catatenu, une Calatu. Read a portion in the English on page three ninety three. The Lord, I am He before you sin. The Lord, I am He after you sin. God, merciful to all, Gentile and Jew. Gracious to those with merit and compassionate to those without merit.
patient with the wicked who may repent, abounding in kindness with those in need of kindness and faithfulness, rewarding those who do my will. King in the Kakome, Beyad, 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 Ayotzer, Birzotto, Marchif, Ubirzotto, Mekarazer, Kenanak, Nuanak, Nu Beyadka, Kenes, No Hotzer. And everybody says, la brita ve, la brita ve, ve al tein fe la yegetse. La brita ve, la brita ve, ve al tein fe la yegetse. 394. King in the car, ve, ve yad, ve yad, ve yad a mesater. Birzotto gest. Ubirzotto me carazet, que nana gnu anagnu me yadja, me jaye u me mote. La brita ve, la brita ve, ve al teif en la yegetse. La brita ve, la brita ve. Last verse. Please rise if you are seated. Adonai, Adonai, el rachum vechanon, el echamayim, el abjeset vehemet, no ser que se traba la fin, no se abon en bafesha vejata venaquen. Adonai, Adonai, el rachum vechanon, el echamayim, el abjeset vehemet, no ser que se traba la fin. No se abor ma fecha me jata ven a que Adonai, Adonai, el rajum de Jandón Eres Jaim, me rajes en de Jemet No sé que se graba la fin No se abor ma fecha me jata ven a que Salakhtarabonenulekhototeinu <laughs> Continuing now on page 398, Mark Oleno. <speaking in Hebrew> 
Hear our voice, Lord our God, pity us, save us, accept our prayer with compassion and kindness. Help us return to you and we shall return, renew our lives as when we were young. Cast us not away from your presence, take not your Holy Spirit from us, cast us not away when we are old, when our strength is gone, do not abandon us. Do not abandon us, Lord our God, do not be far from us. Show us a sign of grace in spite of our foes, for you are our help and our comfort. Hear our words, O Lord, and consider our inmost thoughts. May the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. For you we wait, O Lord. You, O, o God, will answer. We are on page 400. Our God and God of our fathers, forgive us, pardon us, grant us atonement. In the third paragraph, Eloino veloia boteinus lach lanu mechal lanu capere lanu ki Anu ameja me ata en lo veinu, anu maneja me ata viru, anu amadeja me ata donde veinu, anu que aleja me ata el que inu, anu. Nakala te cabe a tango na leinu, anu zoneja ve a tano leinu, anu carmeja ve a tano otre leinu, anu peula teja ve a tayo leinu, anu. Raya te cabe a tanto donde no, a no segura te cabe a tanto donde no, a no a me cabe a tan mal que no hay no, a no más a mi reja de a tan mal que no hay no. 
Ah, no, 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 Right, this is the portion of the davening with the Ashamnu. Uh, it is alphabetical in structure, Aleph Bet Gimel. Just as we sin with all the letters of the Aleph Bet, so do we ask God for Slicha Umechila. And I'm going to share with you this is the Ashamnu A to Z. We assume the worst in others, the best of ourselves. We betrayed the trust others have placed in us. We've confused that which is essential with that which is not. We destroyed ourselves with needless abuses. We felt superior to others by means of ability, wealth, or power. And we've given less than our full selves to our community and our world. Now the Ashamnu in the Hebrew which is uh, transliterated, the second paragraph from the bottom on 403, with breastfeeding. Gazalnu, gibarnu, lufi, ebinu, veirushanu, zarnu, kamaznu, kafalnu, sheker, yatsnu, kizanamnu, latsnu, badanu. Yatsnu, Sararnu, Ravinu, Pashanu, Sararnu, Kishinu, Pashanu, On page 406, we have the al Khait and the ark is open. al Khait shekatanu lefanecha veore veimu vutzahale ve al Khait shekatanu lefanecha Bebitubu y se fatahi al jet se catanu le faneja begalu y ubasate y al jet se catanu le faneja bedibu repe al jet se catanu le faneja bearjur hale y al jet se catanu le faneja bebidu y pe al jet se catanu le faneja besado gaga Ve al jeche katanu le faneja ve kilumu la sheme. Al jeche katanu le faneja ve tipshu gupe. Ve al jeche katanu le faneja ve yo de gimu ve lo yo de gimu. Ve al kula ve lo ais liko slaj. Me 
Civil War. Civil War seems to be what people are talking about these days, and I hope not. But this is a story, uh, Gr uh, General Grant, Ulysses Grant, of course, as the commander of all the armies of the Union, the Army of the Potomac, and uh, his good friend, but subordinate in this instance, General William Tecumseh Sherman. And General Sherman came to General Grant and said that there was a certain a uh, general that whom he wanted to, a junior general whom he wanted to have court-martialed because it seemed as though every time that general was in command, um, calamity ensued. And General Grant said, uh, General Sherman, this man in question is not a professional soldier. He is an attorney. He was pressed into the service of our cause. He is doing the best he can. I'm willing to work with him to correct his errors but I will not punish him via a court martial. And that is a good way to think about the high holy days for us Jews. We are not professional saints, nor are we professional sinners. We are all doing the best we can. We do the al khayt this catalog of sins, to help ourselves see and correct our errors, not to berate ourselves. In the end, what we should hope for is to emerge after the Yom Kippur experience with a cleaner soul, a clearer purpose, and a more noble resolve to do better next year. Thank you. Please be seated. All right, page uh, 410, the Yanenu. Misha Sash, Misha Nal, Yavrama Vinu, Bearamo Amoria, Rau Yanenu, Misha Nal, Eitzkag Venu, Shekesheneka, Razal Gava Mizbea, Hu Yanenu, Misha Nal, Yakov Bebet El, Ho Yanenu. Mi sheana le Yosef beita surigim hu hu yahaneinu. Mi sheana la voteinu al yamesuf hu hu yahaneinu. Mi sheana le Moshe bachoref hu hu yahaneinu. Mi sheana le Aron ben Ata hu yahaneinu. Mi sheana le Pinchas bekorim. Mi sheana le chola tzadikim, vachasidim, veadmimim, veyesharigim, uyahaneinu. Right. 
414. Okay. Abino Malkeinu Katanu Lefaneja, Abino Malkeinu El Alomelejelata, Abino Malkeinu Aseimanu Leman Shemeja, Abino Malkeinu Jadeshanetuba. Abino Malkeinu Sheba Akeinu, Abino Malkeinu.
be seated. Uh, we have the full Kaddish on 418. <laughs>
and the mourners Kaddish, if you're saying Kaddish, please remain standing. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemei rabba, amen. V'yalama divra chirute v'yamliach machute. V'chaye chon v'yamei chon v'chaye d'chol b'yit Yisroel. Ba'galah v'yizman kari v'yimru, amen. Yehesh me rabba mevorach li'olam ul'meil maya. Yit borach, v'yishtabach, v'yit po'ar, v'yit romam, v'yit nase, v'yit adar, v'yit alay, v'yit alal, shemei d'kudisha b'richu. V'yela li'yela mikol b'yirachata v'shirata, tushbechata v'nechamata, t'amiran b'yalma v'yimru, amen. Yehesh lama rabba min shemaya, v'chayim aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'yimru, amen. Ose shalom b'mramav, hu yase shalom. Aleinu v'yal ko Yisroel, v'yal ko Yishvei Tevel, v'yimru, amen. You may be seated, and uh, just letting folks know. The service uh, tomorrow begins Monday, 9.30 a.m. Okay, that's, that's it. That's what I got. I'll tell you, we have listed that Yisker is at 11 o'clock, but it could be a Jewish 11 o'clock, so don't hold me to yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. And I do want to we thank... We meet at 9.30. Uh, yes. All right. 9.30 you can bank on. I want to thank uh, my colleague, the cantor, cantor Javier Smolars. And Welcome. Accompanist. Thank you. Okay. Marcelo Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got... Yigdal. Yigdal. Good. Yigdal on page 426. Yigdal de lo himchai ve gigishtar abar Nimtam beheide ter beziuto Echad ve gen yachir keihichudo Nen negam beizov le abduto Echad de mutagov ve gen lo guf Nona rochelaf keredushato Kadmon de chundabar asher al nigibra Rishon ve el reishin le reishito Zolato, sofe ve yo de acetar en ello, a vin de sofda mar ve can mato, con me le guijis que se que mi guifara lo, no te le rachará que rechato, y ya le que si a mi me shiri que ello, ni don me ja que que si es un pato, me si vieja llegue el perro of carazón, aruja de guiñar el shente guiñar, Please rise for the closing benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Yael Adonai Panabeleja Vejuneca. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Isa Adonai Panabeleja Vejasem Leja Shalom. May the Lord turn his face unto you and grant you peace. We'll say Amen. Gimru Tov. Have a good completion of the fast and God willing everybody should be written in the book of life. We'll say Amen. Baruch Adonai Shukriya, Shukriya, Shukriya.